My name is Tom Boley. This is Hayward, Wisconsin. Hayward was once a famed fishing hotspot. Together, we are going to put Hayward back on the map as a serious fishing destination. This film is brought to you by Hayward Lakes Visitors and Convention Bureau, Treeland Resorts on the Chippewa Flowage, Hayward Area Chamber of Commerce, Ringer Small Engine and Power Sports. Well, today we are going to pick up a good friend of mine, Caleb Raymer, here at uh, Raymer Small Engine Repair and uh, Power Sports. We are going to be fishing uh, uh, Lake X today for some large walleyes. Is this Caleb right here? That is not Caleb. We're going to swim inside here and uh, find Caleb, pick him up for a few hours, and see if we can't catch a few walleyes. Stay tuned. I take care of none of my stuff and always bring Caleb my uh, four-wheeler in the winter. Get her back yeah. running, but uh, yeah, tell the guys what you do around here. All right, well, we do uh, a little bit of everything. We do mowers, uh, we got chainsaws, uh, so we do repair and uh, sales, obviously. We sell a full line of Husqvarna handheld equipment, and we sell a full line of lawnmowers. We've got Snapper, Simplicity, and Ferris. So yeah, and we service it all, so that's kind of how we got into it, just a lot of a lot of working on stuff, that's what we like doing, and so, yeah. Cool. And cookies. I'm yep, definitely going to steal cookies. one for the road. Yep. So where are we going today? Don't tell the name of the lake. Okay. It's Round Lake though. <laughs> anyways, what are we going to do? Okay, well, we're hopefully going to catch some walleyes. We hear it's been pretty good, so we're going to see if we can uh, see if we can uh, dig up a few more out there. So. Alright, perfect. Yep. We're going to hit the road, we'll see you on the lake. Here you go, Caleb. Got him. Go. Hooked up on number one. Took about uh, five minutes in. We temporarily lost the school and we got a double on Caleb. Hooked up. How's that one feel? Ah, uh, medium. Medium size? Yep. Craziness right off the bat. I like it. You got a small mouth. It is a bass. I got a walleye. A little scrapper. Put both of them in the net. There we go. There we go. Decent double to start the day. Took about five minutes. If you've never looked at Round Lake before or heard anything about it, it is probably one of the best smallmouth bass lakes in northern Wisconsin. But we will talk about that on another day. This one's about the average size for out here. He's about uh, 18, 17 and a half inch, kind of skinny. Most of them are quite a bit fatter than that guy. We'll let him go real quick and see if we can't get a few more. We're going down. Hook delt. This one is not very big. Another eater sized one here. I'm gonna flip him on in. So we've been getting a lot of fish like this up to about uh, 24 inches recently. He's about a 16 incher. Great ear sized fish, we'll flip him back. Hooked up. Go, yep. Nice. Fish number three, a couple of bass and a couple of bass and a couple of walleyes. This is acting like a larger fish. Oh yeah. Which it is. What's he doing here? Nice right. walleye. Those are the ones we like seeing. Excellent work. We're sitting here working this pot of fish and there's one weed line where uh, most of them are and kind of when we're not catching them in the weeds, we're just throwing a few slip bobbers out and around testing uh, the areas around it. So hooking a leech, pretty simple. You take, a lot of guys will take them and just hook them right through the sucker, which works, no problem. But uh, a lot of times when you're dealing with perch and stuff like that, I'll take it and actually run it kind of lengthwise down the leech. They tangle up a lot less that way in the line. The other big thing is I'm always running them on a jig head. These are eight ounce heads. I want these baits to get down real fast and sit real good in, in what little chop we have. Um, I'll take this knot and swing it all the way to the inside so that thing sits just like that in the water. A lot of times if the leech dies or just kind of quits moving around, 
Um, even if it's still sitting, as long as it's still sitting horizontal, you're gonna be uh, able to catch fish versus a lot of times if you're hooking them on a straight hook, it's gonna look like that, which is obviously less, less productive. So that's how you wanna rig them right there. Biggest leeches you can get, always a rule of thumb in my book. Um, we're gonna get him out here before he dries up and see if we can't get another one. I'm gonna flip over to down in here and see that it is in fact three walleyes. All bundled up right next to each other. And that is what we are hunting and I am down. I'm gonna reel down the slack, hit him good. Ooh. That one might be a little nicer. That's how easy it is when you're uh, power fishing these things. Feels like a nice fish. And that took all of about five seconds. You can still see the walleyes in the sonar. Nice walleye. That is what we're talking about. And when I'm talking about fishing leeches this time of year and how, how effective they are, you can see in his mouth there, these are all insect larvae and wood leeches. You can fish straight through these fish with a lot of crankbait presentations and stuff like that. This is leech time of year. We'll get him back. Perfect. Beauty. All right, I'm here with fisheries biologist of Sawyer County, Max Walter today. I've been fishing around Lake for a long time. Um, it's got a lot of big fish of every species. That's kind of what makes that lake special in my opinion. It's incredibly underfished. I hardly ever see anybody out there fishing. Max, what makes Round Lake, uh, you know, a special lake, and uh, you know, why should more people look at fishing it? Well, I guess maybe part of the reason is there aren't that many people fishing it. You know, everybody thinks about Round Lake as this party lake. You get a lot of boating traffic yeah. out there, a lot of you know different recreational uses. But you're 100% correct that it's way above average as far as size for quite a few different species. You know, smallmouth is kind of on a lot of people's radar for that lake, but it's a great pike lake. It's a good walleye lake. Um, there's some really nice muskies showing up out there now. And the reason for that is I think two, two things. The habitat, um, great structure out there, a diversity of weeds and rocks and sand flats. You kind of get a little bit of everything. You got some mucky bottom bays. So no matter what fish are looking for, depending on you know, different life stages and different species, they've got it there. The other thing is for those predator fish that people are out there fishing for, there's a great forage base. Mm -hmm. There's a really big bodied Cisco population out there. That's a great snack for muskies. That's what pushes those pike up into that next size range where you actually yeah. can get 40 inch pike. And the suckers. And the suckers, absolutely. And the perch. Yeah. So you've kind of got a really good um, diversity out there of different types of, of prey fish and different sizes for all the different uh, game fish species. Yeah. yeah. It really is an underrated lake. I spent a ton of time on round. Definitely looking at fishing it your next time up here. Ah, right there, Caleb. There we go. Going down. Hooked up. That is how you power fish slip bobbers. He's gonna be another about 17 incher. Let's scoop him up there. But yeah, you can see how effective that is. Basically all we're doing is just driving around looking for the fish. Uh, most of the time fishing weed lines like this, we're looking at schools of, um, you know, three to, I generally won't drop on just one fish, but if I'm looking at three or four of them in a stack, I'll drop down real quick and see if we can't grab one. There's another nice eater sized walleye. What's up guys, we're back in the house now. Uh, decent evening of walleye fish and our front kind of disappeared so we probably could have fished a while longer. Um, but anyways, wanna go over some structural things and some uh, rigging things. Um, this, my slip bobber rods, uh, they're kind of a multi-purpose rod. This is a six foot nine or a six foot 10. It's actually a Mojo Bass Drop Shot Rod by St. Croix. Um, when I'm rigging these, you know, like I've talked about, I'm rigging up an eighth ounce short shank jig. Uh, about four, five, four feet of uh, six pound fluoro down to a uh, quarter ounce um, sliding weight and a swivel in there. I like to fish really heavy. So like you see when I'm driving around and I throw the bobber back real quick, I want that stuff to get down there as quick as I can and just sit there in the wind. I don't want it to be wisping away and you know slowly getting down to those fish because they're moving so fast right now uh, that you got to get down to them immediately. The key to this time of year is just moving around as quick as you can. The one thing um, with structure this time of year, you know, 18 to 21 feet is kind of your zone right now what I'm seeing on most of our Hayward area clear lakes. 
Uh, weeds have been a little better than rock, but the main thing is just moving around. Do not stop the boat until you're seeing fish. Um, so those are a couple tips that are absolutely going to help you catch more walleyes this time of year, pretty much no matter where you're fishing in the Midwest right now. Um, so I hope these helped you out. Um, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos in the near future.